Hi there, welcome back to the channel. Welcome to the second video in the restoration series of this Gretz Melodia 519. And this video was supposed to be an easy one. This was supposed to be just getting the radio working, you know, FM, AM, a few capacitors replacing. We know the audio is working. We know the power supply is working. And as usual, Murphy's Law steps in and it's no longer a simple video. It's going to be a short video because this week has been quite uh, busy at this end and I haven't had that much time to work on this. But the problem that I came across here really, really made me lose some hair. Well, not really. I don't have much anyway, but a lot of head scratching, a lot of frustration, quite a bit of swearing all by myself. I don't spread the word. But um, yeah, what I wanted to do was just to get the radio back. Very simple quest, very tough exercise in this particular case. So this sort of thing turns you on. Stick around. Enjoy the video. Before I carry on restoring the radio sections, I want to see if it's receiving anything. So I've put it on medium wave. I've got an antenna in the back. It's still noisy. I've got the volume up. Oy, that is loud. And I'm receiving absolutely bugger all. Hmm. This is not encouraging. It's still stuck. So this is just to show you we're starting from a clean slate, or rather a dead radio. Right, let me replace the remaining capacitors and hopefully we'll get some life back and I'll check the tubes and all that sort of thing. I haven't done much cleaning since the last time. In fact, I've done nothing since the last time. So it should be interesting to see this thing come back to life. Okay. Well, I replaced the two capacitors, that one and that one, that are in the uh, AM section. And guess what? I tried it again. I got exactly the same result. No reception whatsoever. So I had to start thinking of where the problem might be. I replaced the EF89 tube, which is that one there. No result. I replaced the EC EABC80, that one there as well. No result. Now, the logic here is because I'm not getting neither FM nor AM, my, my logic is that it'll be in this chain because that is the common chain to the FM and AM. The audio I know is working. So I know the preamp of this tube is working and the power amp there is working as well. So I started checking the um, connections around the EF89 and I came up with something quite interesting. I did some measurements around this tube. The voltages are about right, but I'll label the pin numbers just to make it easier, as you can see. And I found something interesting. I started measuring. I started going back. So, for example, pin 7 would go through there, through that primary. So, very low resistance. It would go through that primary. Very low, res very low resistance. Down here to here to a 2K resistor. And that would go down to B2+, plus, which is along here. That is fine. So, that means this IF transformer seems to have continuity. And it seems to be fine. That resistor is also fine. Um, this capacity is one of the dog bones, so you don't need to replace that. That one is the one, one of the ones that I replaced. Then I went to, that was the anode, I went to this uh, screen grid, and there's another dog bone to ground, no problem. I come down here, and I find something interesting. If I put the multimeter on here, what should I read? Well, if you look at the DC path from here, the DC path would be Coming out of this point over here, it would go there. It would then, it would come down here. And here it meets one 500K resistor and a 2.5 meg resistor. This goes to the magic eye, so I don't worry about that too much. But it is there and it's measuring fine. This 500 is measuring fine. But then I, I've got this point here from there to there to there, and there it meets a 30k to ground. That's ground over there, fine. And then there's that capacitor over there, which I haven't changed. And if I measure here, what should I get to ground? Well, that's too high. That is 500. There's a ground, but that's another 500. There's a 100 picofarad capacitor, which could be shorted, um, but it would still give me 500 ohms or 500k. That one there goes to that point. There's a 250 ohm there, unless there's a short inside there, which I know there isn't because I replaced this tube. That shouldn't be a path to ground. That 30K would be a path to ground, and this capacitor shouldn't be a path to ground at all. But 
If I measure that point to ground, I've got a short. Now that ain't right. So what did I do? Well, I found a possibility. I thought it could only be that capacitor. So I'm going to try it now. I'm going to cut the uh, ground leg of that capacitor. Now I get 29K, which is that 30K resistor. So there is a short on that capacitor to ground, and I don't really understand how that happened, because very seldom do you get a capacitor really shorting out completely. It's that capacitor there, it's the discriminator cap for the FM, and since I've disconnected it from the ground over there, the short has gone away. So that means that should work, but how did that short out completely? Just checking it again, 29K, that's right. Would that be... I'm going to remove that capacitor completely and check if there's a short. In fact, I'm going to replace that capacitor and um, see what happens. I think it might be the body that's touching the, the chassis over there. Let me try that. Well, I guess there's always a first time. That capacitor is a dead short. Five microfarads. I think this is the first time I've ever seen a discriminator cap electrolytic completely shorted out. But yeah, that took a while to find because I really was not expecting it. And this probably should teach me a lesson when you um, start assuming things. Like you assume that uh, these dog bone capacitors never short out. That, um, yeah, they do happen. Okay, so I'm going to replace that cap with a 4.7 microfarad 50 volt electrolytic from Panasonic. And we'll see if we've improved anything. I've replaced that capacitor. I'll switch it on. I've got it on medium wave, ferret antenna maximum volume and I still get bugger all. So now I've got to think again, what the hell could be wrong with this? I've replaced the tubes, both the EF89 over there and the ABC80, made no difference. It's just buzzing, but it's not making that massive hum that it was making before. So I've replaced that capacitor there. I've removed this short to ground, which was going through that capacitor. So this screen grid is no longer shorter to ground, but it's still not giving me audio or reception, but it has got rid of some of the hum. So something has changed. Now, what am I going to do next? I think what I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to inject 460 kilohertz into this pin over here. And I'm going to check whether anybody has messed with these guys over here. This, this which would have stopped this tube from doing its job. So somebody may have started playing with these. They may have started playing with these adjustments at the top. I know someone's been in here. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to feed the uh, IF signal 460 kilohertz with a tone on there. We'll see if we can hear it. And then I'll adjust these, which are the 96 and 97. 96 and 97. And see if we can hear it and if we can adjust it or... 96, 97. Let's see, where are they? It's this one here. It's these two, top and bottom, closest to the antenna, facing the antenna, but not the closest one. The closest one is this one. That'll be the first stage. This is the second IF. So it's this set of cores over here, which means that it is that guy over there. The um, antenna is on this side. So it's that one there and the one underneath. And where do I feed this? I've got to feed it to pin two, pin two of the FI89, which means this thing's got that divider on there. That's a copper wire shorted ground, but there's pin one, there's pin two. So I'm going to feed the signal into there and we'll see if we can hear it. Let me switch this off so I don't get any mishaps. Right, so I'm using my signal generator. It's going through the uh, switch attenuator over there, which has a capacitor that capacitively couples so it's so there's no dc coupling i'm putting it to pin two over there so now i'm going to switch on the tone i've got 20 millivolts and i can hear it it's not that high but i'm going to try see if anybody's messed with this i'm doing it by ear at the moment Can you hear that? I don't know whether the uh, 
microphone audio gain control, automatic gain control would affect it, but I can certainly hear a peak there. I'm not trying to tune it, I'm not trying to fully align it at the moment, I just want to just want to get this thing sort of aligned. Oh, oh boy, let me drop that. Somebody did mess with this. Whoa. Put it down to one millivolt. Okay, somebody definitely messed with this. They probably messed with that one as well. All right. Okay. Let me see if this thing gets anything now. I'm going to disconnect all this and we'll turn around and see if we get any radio reception. I've connected the mini web antenna to there. Let's see what we get, if anything. So, medium wave. Beautiful. Oh, jeez. What a bloody relief. I don't think I've ever been happier to hear a Spaniard speak. This is reception from the Canary Islands. Now, what I'm going to do is see if this makes any difference on this one here. Because if they messed with this one, they might have messed with this one as well. I'm messing with the FM one. That doesn't help. No. Nope. Looks like they only messed with that one. Didn't mess with that one. Okay, good. Right, so our AM is back. This is the wrong time of the day for best AM, but at least we got something. Shortwave. Yep. Okay, short waves there. What about FM? FM, I've still got the problem of that thing being locked in there. Let me manually move it back. Okay. Oh, what a relief. I must admit, this thing has driven me nuts. Of course, because I've messed with that guy there by mistake. Okay. Still needs alignment, but at least, at least I've got this working. People, I can't tell you how frustrating this thing has been for me. This thing really just threw all my habits out of, uh, out of whack over here. And that is where I think I'm going to have to stop for today. The frustration was all because of this little guy. One electrolytic capacitor shorted out completely, which does not normally happen to me. I'll say to me because some of you might have had the same frustrating experience, but um, yeah, I guess it's always the first time. So, folks, I'm going to break for now because this week has been rather tumultuous in a good way, but um, it's left me with very little time to actually work on, on my hobby. And I'll be carrying on. I've got a lot to do here. As you can tell, a lot of it's got to do with the mechanical, the cleaning, and then finally the alignment and the, the chassis and so on. 
Somebody has also kindly offered to send me one of these, an unbroken one, so that'll be great. So although short, I hope you've enjoyed that. And if you have, click like, share, subscribe, and all that jazz. And I'll see you soon for the next installment. Once again, thanks for watching. Bye for now and stay safe.